girl. Welcome, everybody. Now you know why I want to go back to the 19th century, maybe the 20th. But there are so many questions that are being asked. And somewhere up there, there's a James Webb solar telescope. And they're able to show me dead planets who are visible now billions of years ago, but we can't connect to Facebook. Okay, shall we begin? Let's begin. Let us begin. Okay, I am going to be painting today, but before that, I have to tell you, I conquered two enormous obstacles. So enormous, I thought that I could never paint again because my hand shakes. And then, and from now on, I'll introduce you to the people of whom I'm speaking, okay? Gary, over here, brought down a video of a man who was painting on a flat surface, and he was doing things like even eyelashes on people, but because his hand was like this, he didn't need to stop the hand from shaking. And so we liberated the room. We took away everything from the desk, from life. We moved everything, and this became my easel. In other words, I can paint. And the second thing is, I can't hear. I need hearing aids. I've tried so many hearing aids, but it seems that my ear canal is so thin and probably does dance moves. It's not direct. And I could not get my hearing aids in. Kenny could. Joni could. I tried to, uh, if to see if my physical therapist could do it. She couldn't. I asked somebody else who's a nurse. She tried and she couldn't. And I decided what Eric used to say when people would say to him, Eric, how come you can do so many things? Things which had nothing to do with what you love doing. How do you do it? And his answer always was, if they don't need me, they'll kill me, and I'm not going to let them win. And that was when he was in the ghetto and in the concentration camp, and he lived. So I sat down in the morning, and no, I sat down at night when it was perfectly in, because Kenny had put it in, and I very carefully pulled it out. But as I pulled it out, I became painfully aware of how my hand is, what it touches, what it did not touch, and I slid it into the ear canal. And I thought, oh my God, I did it. Let's see if I concentrate on the other ear, if I can do it. And then I said, so many people couldn't do it in my ear. I know the ear canal is tiny and that it's crooked. But if Kenny was able to do it, Eric, what would you have done? And Eric said, from up there, he said, if they don't need me, they won't let me live, and I'm not going to let them win. And I did it over and over again, being completely aware of when I heard the battery, where my finger was sliding this hearing aid, and I got it in. Mm -hmm. And I sat there and I thought, the nature does not make it easy. 
And as I get my painting ready, I would like Kenny to read something that I discovered. Okay? Beautiful. And I'll get myself set up. And this is what Hetty said. These were Hetty's words. So I'm just going to read, read them. This is what she said in our conversation about her experience with this. She said, there are ways to get around problems and obstacles. There are ways to fulfill what you want, even in the face of challenges. Which I have to say reminded me of the days when Hetty was wheelchair bound and crippled with lupus and said, I'm going to heal myself. I'm going to heal myself. And never, never gave up. And you know, now has been in complete remission for, I don't know what, 60 years. Uh, from really serious lupus. Anyway, she said, there are ways to fulfill what you want, even in the face of challenges, like my challenge last week with painting, and I found an invention. The ways that we find are not what we picture, they're not what we imagine, but they honor the realities of what's around us. This is what I found. I could use the table. I can use my desk. And it respects what my arm needs because I can control it. But I only discovered that by trying so many different things. And the same is true with people. There are ways to get to healing. There are ways to get to understanding. But they are not necessarily the ways that our mind tells us. We have to listen to and respect the other person define what they need and what they think or the solution is forced and it won't work. Thank you, Kenny. Whenever you're ready, we can begin. We are ready. Okay. Now, how are you going to photograph what I do? I'll just lean over. It's okay. Fine. Then... I would like to begin right now with what they've already seen me do. Kenny, do you want me to begin with what I began over here with Lee and Cheryl or to do Johanna? Johanna's who you worked on last week where you had the struggles, right? Let's see if it's dry enough. It's dry. You decide, Mom. Well, whatever, whatever you want. she's drier than they are, so it'll be better. And now, meanwhile, while you set this up, I'm just going to say that we have lots and lots of people on. Um, whew, Steve Schlussel is watching. Oh, great. Greg is here. Says he can hear you. Kathy Lindon Cawthorn is watching. Steve uh, Hernan is watching and says he can hear you. Hi. Megan Weymouth is watching, Ed Weedman is watching, Marsha Goldstein Graber, and, and Ed says hi Eddie and Kenny. Marsha says great. Sandy Kelman Alzek says I hear you, Aunt Eddie. Kathy Lehan Cawthorn says hi Eddie. Dina says we will always wait. Phyllis says good evening. Marsha sends hugs. Lee, Robin Lisa is watching. And Dina says, like your oils, we do not dry quickly. <laughs> and Phyllis is watching. Julie is watching. Marsha said, amazing idea. Tom Starace is watching. Um, hi, Tom. Um, Tom is a brilliant children's book illustrator and a good friend. Matthias Almquist is watching. Kent is watching and says, hi, Hetty. John Terracuso is watching and says, hi, Hetty. Hi, Ken. Hugs from California. Phyllis says, way to go, Kenny. Martha Bilski is watching. Can you put the, the, the mm -hmm. phone Sorry, sorry. Mm -hmm. Sherry Cleves is watching. Martha says, hi, Hetty. Love from grandson Lucas, 11th birthday. I can't stay. I just wanted to see your face. Oh, how wonderful. Kathy says, my Hetty, you are a bright light. Just wanted to see your face. Ed Wheatman says, wow, that was so beautiful, Kenny. What great words from your mom. And Sandy says, Ishmael and Sofian are watching. And here goes Hetty. Okay. Now I want you to describe Johanna to you. Johanna has such gracefulness. 
If you remember what I did last time, I took off her legs and changed the position because Johanna would never look klutzy. And so now that she's nice and dry and I can trim down the ankles, all of this silk, I'm leaning on this. My arm is completely happy. Do you see that? Yes. So, Mom, Kent Almqvist's son is watching in Sweden and says, regard from the Swedish photographer son. And Dory is watching. Dory has been so careful to, for me to get up every 20 minutes, she would say, mm. Hedy, you're sitting too long. Mm. And as for Kent's son, here he is. Can you point to Kent's son? Show me where. Right here. And that's his daughter. And that's his wife. And someday this painting will be finished. But until then, please have patience. Because I love doing it. And I thought I would never be able to do it again until now when I can put my arm on here. There's something I would like, Kenny, to read to you. It's a story that I used to use in my life and I taught it to my children. And it's about, in life, if you want to do something, it's never going to be easy if you want to do it correctly. But if, watch I'm changing brushes constantly. And if you want to do something that you don't yet know how to do, Make believe that you're in a room, but they do not let you out into the next room until you finish everything that this room needs. But until they do not teach you what should happen until you finished everything. And the funny thing is, Dory, who does our YouTube, was teaching me that when you do something, don't move it until you finished everything that it needs which is so much the theory that I was speaking of. Now look how tedious this work is. In, not because I'm having my hand the way it is, but because oil, when your hand wants something, And it made, not like a pencil, where you do it and it's done. But when you have to blend things and you have to make sure that it's the right. The right, I guess, the word would be wetness. Or the right temperature. My graceful, enormously graceful Johanna, if you were not graceful, I could just have given you long trousers. <laughs> but. No, Mom. Yes. Should I tell that story in a little more detail about the room 
the room concept? Oh, I would love it, Kenny. So I will tell this story. Oh my God, Ben is here. Ben, ben. Said, yes. Ben from camp. Eric Anderman is here. Sarah's dad. Oh, this is wonderful. Ben, hello. And you're all reading Joanna. Yes. My graceful friend. So this is how that story happened. I'll, I'll tell people because it was so amazing. So Hetty had fallen. Can I just show you how suddenly her legs are going yeah. to be graceful? Mm -hmm. But the patience that it took for the pain to obey me, because it couldn't be broad strokes. It had to be blended. Okay, I won't interrupt. So Hetty was in the hospital. She had fallen. She was. She had just gone through serious, serious surgery, and um, she was in brutal pain, brutal pain. And um, one morning, I went to the hospital, and she said, "Ken, last night I came to understand why I love." and respect work so much and the meaning of work and she said I had a dream and she said the dream was that I was confronted with a room and she said and this is what it's like for us in life I was confronted with this room and there was ta there were tasks in this room that I absolutely did not want to do they were hard they were big they were daunting I did not want to do them every part of me didn't want to do them but I knew I needed to do them. So I did those tasks and the room opened up and led me to the next room, which was the next room of my life. But if I wouldn't have committed to completing the tasks in the first room, life would not have allowed me into the next room. And that is why I value work so deeply. So that's the story of Hetty and uh, the rooms. And the story of Joanna's graceful legs. Yes. And I will share with you that um, Robin, uh, um, Dina says, maybe I missed the session, but are all of you in the painting? You and Eric and Ken and Joni and Greg and Jesse, all of us, as well as our other two children, Deirdre and Mary, are all in the painting. Robin Lisa says, you are amazing. Benji says, is watching. Dory says, your hand is so steady. I know, look and at this. I really, she says, I really couldn't tell yesterday because you were mock painting. Sandy says, what a beautiful painting. Benji says, hello, it's been a while. Kathy says, it's a beautiful painting and I am honored too. As Hetty has started to paint my horse and I. Ken Harris is watching. Julie says, my dear Hetty, I am so impressed by your perseverance and positivity. But look at the rewards. Wait, there's more. Yes, yes. The painting has come such a long way, so beautiful. I'm glad to hear you channeling Eric's wisdom during his birthday month. Love you and love you, Ken. Dory says, look how easily you just did that strap on Johanna's shoe. And Julie says, wow, I love that story about work and rooms, so profound. And Dina says, that is great. Now, let's show, let me show you this. For Johanna to be as graceful as she is, I need to add flesh tone where, where I would have to do a few layers. But I just have to acknowledge that one week ago you weren't really even able to paint things carefully because of your shaking and right. you didn't know what you would do and you tried so many right. solutions and nothing worked and here you are completely free to paint now. Because somewhere, it, 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 it's not by accident, here's what happened. Gary over here, who's my neighbor, brought the film down about this young person who worked like this. And then he and Kenny at separate times arranged this room so my paints would be right there. And 
Johanna's legs are only done by me because somebody told me about another artist. So you only learn because you've prepared the soil and if these people would not have been friends of mine, I wouldn't have known. Mm. And Melanie that's Castillo Berzak is watching. Janine Schultz is watching. Ed says Gary is amazing and the best neighbor. Thank you, Gary. Yes. And all of you, please look at her legs and be aware of how long it took. But if I wouldn't have taken this time, think about it, then it wouldn't exist. So give lovingly, don't give stingily. Don't say, but I've worked so long, <laughs> it's not fair. I'm coming because See, Tammy and Tracy, they were here last week, and they were the ones who taught me their view of the universe, and that is that the universe knows what needs to be done and who the people are who must do it. And in the weirdest way, it brings them together. Dory says, it took a village. Yes. And Janine says, this is wonderful. Marsha Goldstein Graber says, this is the most amazing master class ever. Thank you, Eddie. And she's the one who convinced me that I should paint like this. Now watch, the only thing left to do is, the strap needs to be darker. And I shouldn't do it now, <laughs> but I will because I'm dying to. Because Let me just say, we're, we're going to run five minutes late because we started five minutes Right, late. that's our fault. Oh, my gosh, yes. Actually, it's not a fault. It's because it had to be. Now, the first thing I'm going to do in order to do her, her sleeve, because if her arm is not as graceful as she is, then I'm not right. So let me take a little bit of a deep black and give her a graceful swoop. I have never seen Joanna wearing something which did not flow. So in order to flow, I need some blue because where the light would fall on her shoulder, I need a light. And you may notice how I have to twist myself, but that's good for the arthritis. If I, the arthritis has changed me because if I wouldn't use the parts of me that are arthritic, they would stop working completely. And so, thank you, Johanna's arms, because to swoop this, I have to change the motion. Kimmy, do I have time to finish her jacket? Um, if not, we'll do it next week. You still have time. Okay. But you see what I'm doing. And now, you see, Joanna is very good about spelling. And she noticed that I had spelled things wrong in that sign. And so I rubbed out <laughs> the whole sign. I put paint on it. And quietly, when none of you 
are televising me <laughs> on one morning after breakfast without coffee because my hand does shake with coffee. So without coffee, I'm going to write all the information on there. And now, how do I make you very graceful, Johanna? I take some deep black, and I go like this. Johanna, don't you ever gain weight or change your body because this is permanent. Have Rona you? is saying looking great. Francis <laughs> Russo is watching. Kathy says, I so enjoyed our visit today. You have taught me so much. Okay, I will tell you about Kathy. Kathy, well, somebody said to me, Hedy, you've got to stop putting people in. <laughs> there, you have so many people in there, and you have so little time in which to paint. And stop putting people in. But one day, I always walk in the morning, unless it's pouring, or unless it's very windy. And on the way, there's a lady who sits on her balcony and watches me go by and she introduced herself to me and we enjoyed each other talking and she told me about her horse. Now I have never pictured putting a horse into a painting of the Long Beach Boardwalk. Right? But First of all, it's, I need Johanna to be as graceful as she is. So that black minutes. thing on her has to be looped more. We've about three minutes. For those three minutes, I'll keep working. Yes, and I want to tell you that um, Michael Albert is watching. Oh, Michael, there he is in the painting. He's not finished. And that's his mother. And I'll tell you, when I paint him, I'll tell you all the story of this wonderful friendship. Sandy says the job you've done on this painting is amazing. Phyllis asked when you started creating this painting. How what? long has it been? Kenny, do you know who it was? I think it's been like three years. Okay, wait a minute. Let me, let me remember something. This was a painting of an archaeologic, archaeological dig in Manhattan. And for it, I knew I needed a huge canvas. All right. And I began it. And I loved it. And one day I went there, and the site was closed off. There were no, they discovered that it had been a burial ground. And we were not allowed to work there anymore. So there I was with a huge canvas. In my life, I would never have done, but you see how beautiful it's gonna be now? Mm -hmm. Because yes. that arm took away her grace. Not the arm, but the angle. Eric Anderman, Jesse's cousin Sarah's dad says, so glad to have tuned in. Thank you for sharing your amazing talents and the joy you find in your work. And Dory says, at this rate, at the rate you're going, it's going to be a triptych or more. <laughs> Thank you so much. And three cheers for Kenny, who's been my, my mentor my hero, my everything. And for, for my wonderful Greg, who rescues us whenever nothing, something doesn't work. I love you all. Bye-bye.